Good morning, everyone. I will try to speak in English as best as I can. So I'm going to present to you a project that was made by our colleagues in Japan. We got a JV, Nikon JV in Japan. So they use quite a lot the yellow scan in conjunction with our uh, total station to make the project over there. So I'm going to try to present what they do. I didn't do the project myself, but I'll try my best. So just before a few slides about Trimble, in case you don't know who we are. So we are uh, created, uh, founded in 1978 in the US, so like uh, the pioneer of GPS with uh, Charlie Trimble. And then we evolved quite a lot, so we're more, like, more than 70, so sorry, 7,000 employees right now. Uh, I guess even more today uh, through acquisitions. So you can see a list of acquisitions. So myself, I come from a company called Mency. Uh, Trimble bought us in 2003 at the same time than Aplanix. Uh, I'm sure you know Aplanix. Uh, and uh, some other companies through the, through the time. So it's difficult sometimes to catch up with uh, which company is part of Trimble. Uh, we lack over $3 billion right now. And uh, so you can see the, the trend here. And we got like five, uh, five pillars at Trimble. And I'm part of the geospatial one. So basically, all the GPS, total stations, 3D laser scanners, and, and so on, mobile mapping. So about the project itself. So I got the slide. So it might be in Japan English, and sometimes in French. So it's a mix between different languages on the slide. So I hope you're going to enjoy that. So up, oh, sorry, in the light. OK, perfect. It's hot now. <laughs> So they, they had a project to build like a new road in a very mountainous uh, area. So Japan is full of mountains, as you may know. I used to live there, so I know it a little bit. Lots of forest, so fairly bad for traditional scanning. Trees are very bad, basically. But also it was like fairly steep. So also bad for UAVs, in a way. So you can see the data was acquired shortly after construction for topo survey and volume calculation as well. Uh, also, like some a steep area, like so more than 70 meters. So I think that's also impacted the choice of the yellow scans they picked to do the job. And also cutting vegetation was not completed. And finally, the purpose of the survey was to do volume calculation, but also compare with the design of the road. Because that's important when you build a road to make sure it can fit into the area, obviously. So that's the size of the road. I had a link to Google Earth, but it will be difficult to do it from here. But uh, just to give you an idea about the area, and basically the road was uh, inside this area. So some steep place here. Coming back to the light. Okay. So you can see how it looks like. Uh, fairly nice for, so for uh, traditional laser scanning. You can do all the, the road itself, but they needed also information about the top of the cliffs and, and below. But because of the trees, it was impossible for them to capture that with our technology. And that's why they use a yellow scan. And I was talking with Tristan and other people. And in Japan, it's fairly popular, or very popular, to use yellow scan uh, hardware with a Trimble uh, also hardware and software, like a mix. And there's going to be a presentation at 2 this afternoon by another person from Japan. So I'll give you an idea about the, the site itself. So also like to survey all this would take like uh, hours, maybe, maybe days, to collect all this. And I think they did a project in uh, 30 minutes or so. So which solution did they use? So due to the size of the project, and the topography, uh, one instrument couldn't fit all the needs, as I try to explain. So vast area, uh, lots of vegetation, so limited line of sight, and some very steep area, so difficult access and difficult for drones as well. So it was then decided by them to use a Trimmel SX10. So I will just few slides after to explain what is a Trimmel SX10 uh, to measure the control points and uh, other specific, specific points as well and also to be able to scan some of the area remotely. And then they use a yellow scan VX20, so there is one on the table here. And together with Sky Heli, uh, which I will have some pictures after. It's a nice setup, actually, very nice, I should say, for the whole forested area. And what the Japanese colleague told me, they made really a great use of the five 
pulses of five echoes. I don't want to say anything stupid about yellow scan because I don't know it very well, to be honest. But I think they really loved it. They say it was fantastic technology. And they processed uh, all the data inside Trimble Realworks. That's a software we released in 2001. So made like for uh, 3D point cloud. And uh, colleagues in Europe, will, uh, I think there is some people from Sweden in the room. I will give no name. But they will use maybe Trimble Business Center to process the data as well. So different options from us. So Trimble S Extend, I'm not here to sell, to, uh, to sell uh, Trimble S Extend to you. I'm back in the technical side, so I'm not a sales guy. But just to tell you a little bit about the technology. So it's a, it's a one second total station that can do very good scanning. And uh, mixed with that, we get like a total station scanning, but also imagery. And if you are a Trimble user, if you like a, our GPS to measure your, con your control points, most likely you will use Trimble Access software in the field. That's the same software we use for that instrument. And then, most likely, most likely, sorry, you will process your data inside Trimble Business Center. So the same ecosystem, basically. So using yellow scan or the SX10 on GPS. Uh, just a few uh, specs about it. Again, I'm not here to, uh, to sell it, but the range, uh, 600 meters, was interesting for them, as well as the low noise, uh, actually, uh, the low noise of the point cloud. So. 1.5 millimeter. So I will just keep on that it's just for your information. I'm here to talk about yellow scan and Trimble together. About the lightning technology a little bit, uh, very small spot size, uh, prism, uh, non-prism, so total, st total station, sorry. Uh, ISP, long range scanning, so like a bridge, uh, difficult to scan otherwise. And at the same time, and what's important for, for us, it's a total station, so if you like traverse technique, like a surveyor will do, all your scans are automatically registered together. That's all a big plus. Also, you can measure like discrete points at the same time. And then we also get some uh, nice uh, imagery combined with it for quality control, but also to extract some points uh, just after. Just one second, sorry. If you know it, that's a, the pont or the bridge of Noirmoutier. So be careful next time you use it. There is maybe some problem, so just a little warning. Uh, so application for the SX10, so that's why I, I wanted to put that slide, because it's a good, it's a good uh, mix with the yellow scan in terms of applications, uh, topography, general survey, architecture, uh, volumetric survey, inspection, and uh, as built as well. Uh, also, I think in Sweden, they do a lot with power lines. Uh, they do quite a lot of work for power lines, so it's a perfect combination too, uh, the SX10 and the yellow scan VX20 on more application. So about the Trimble SX10 in action in, in Japan. So nice photo, because uh, people working for us are the Nikon people, so they know a little bit about photography, more than me, actually. But that's just set up in the field. And then about yellow scan, so I think there's some people of yellow scan here, so I just used some slides from your uh, website, so apologies in advance. So they use a yellow scan VX20. If you want more information about yellow scan VX20, there is many people you can ask questions to, and Tristan especially, and other people as well. But I just wanted to, to put some few words about it, and uh, of course because, uh, because of Aplanix, which is part of the Trimble family and also all the, the regal scanner uh, that are inside. And some specifications, so I just put a little note at the bottom because we know at Trimble, we know quite a lot about that combination about uh, Aplanix, uh, IMU, and regal scanners. We got a system for mobile mapping called the MX9, where we combine those technologies together. So basically, we do the same workflow with Postpack, all those software, to get to the point at the end. So. But uh, the Japanese colleague picked it because it was good for accuracy and uh, many other things. It was really for them the perfect. I don't know, Tristan, if you know if they use other yellow scan in Japan or mostly the VX20. 
Sorry if the question lies like this. No problem. So yes, uh, in Japan they use uh, probably the whole range of uh, the sensor, maybe except the mapper two, but the surveyor and ultra are also popular for their okay. forest uh, stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kristen. So this is the setup they used. Uh, you can see a nice uh, helicopter. Uh, it's called Sky Heli, I think. That's what they told me. So I trust them. Name is Sky Heli. Little zoom on the, on the setup itself. So very nice setup, actually. Better zoom. So I don't know exactly what type of bracket they used, but apparently it was working very fine. And they use it like, quite often over there. So, but the software they use, because it's one thing to collect data, it's another thing after to process it. So, of course, they have to go through post-pack for the trajectory with the IMU. And then they use the LIS uh, export. I don't know exactly which software they use, but they put the points via LIS to import inside the real world. So, if you want more information, you can go on to, to the Trimble website uh, about Trimble real world. So it's a, since 2001, we, we made the first release of that software. So basically to uh, import data from different sensors and then many tools to do like inspection, cross sections, volumes, autophoto, uh, you name it. But just to let you know what type of software they use. And in Europe, people will use uh, mostly like Trimble Business Center uh, for a few reasons. Because you can import different type of field data, so total station, GPS, uh, on others, uh, point cloud, imagery. You can make your adjustment. Uh, CAD on drafting. I know sometimes we work in 3D on all those nice things, but you, I, I've been in that world for 21 years now. At the end, people sometimes want a piece of paper with a schematics. That's what they want. So, nice way to do it. A volume, surface, contours, corridors, and, and much more. So, like the mobile mapping at the end. So, fairly similar to. Uh, what we see here today. The results, and I think I'll be really on time, that's good. I can slow down a little bit. So <clears throat> this is a point cloud using the Trimble SX10. So uh, they just did one setup just for one specific area because it was difficult for the yellow scan to cover it. So I just did like one setup with a Trimble SX10. And from that setup, they measured also all the control points. And then they could do some adjustment of the control points. So as you can see, there's like a color point cloud with the trees and, and so on. So after what they needed to do, they need to clean uh, the point cloud, the database. So we got some algorithm to make some uh, auto classification of the point cloud. So outdoor and indoor, so mostly outdoor in that project. So we just extracted the ground, which was possible to extract like buildings, poles, signs, power lines, and vegetations. Uh, automatically, in a matter of few uh, seconds or minutes, depending on the size of your uh, database. Then sometimes there is still some little outliers. So we have like a filter, a topography-based filter, to also get to a, a much cleaner point cloud. It's very important before you produce any contours or volume to get a, a good point cloud. If there is some noise or parasite, it will give you like some spikes in your, in your mesh or DTM. And then with a yellow scan VX20, so they could cover the whole area in a very short period of time. So that's uh, the data, uh, including vegetation, the ground, and so on. So, and then they could run the classification filter to extract just the surface itself. And I think they also did some sampling because they wanted to create a DTM. But as you know, if you get like 10 million points or one of the million points, you multiply by two for the size of your, your mesh. And I just put, created a slide, because fairly interesting, I think, to see in green, that's the SX10 area. In yellow, that's the yellow scan area. So we follow the trees in the mountains. So pretty perfect combination. And to enhance that, I made some cross sections. You can see at the bottom, I don't know if you can see clearly in the back, it's not. Uh, you can see in yellow the cross section, so the plane coming like this, and yellow is uh, the yellow scan. That's why I pick yellow. It's not, sorry, it's not funny. And in green, uh, the uh, Trimble SX10. So you can see the difference is like they're really like together, like uh, really well together, those two, uh, two hardware, those two uh, point clouds, sorry. 
And then we could just create some, uh, some surface, that was the goal of the project, and some contours, that's what the client wanted. And also they wanted to compare all this with the design. So you can see it's a nice one between the survey, so it's a mix of yellow scan and SX10, and the design that they received from the client. So nice cross-sections to see that there is still some work to be done in some area, maybe to cut more or to move the soil here, and so on. So very useful for them. They could make multiple cross-sections at any position. In fact, they're like sitting with a client to talk about the project. Why do you need information? Uh, they could have done also like an inspection map where you can compare the design with a point cloud and see like some cut and fill area and so on. So very good uh, combination together. And just to conclude, so due to time constraint again and the, and the area to be surveyed, it, really the dual use of SX10 and Yellowscan VX20 was for them the perfect combination to make that project in a short period of time, also like very safely, because safety in Japan is really, really important, trust me. First time I was in Japan, I had my hands in my pockets on a job site and say, remove your hands from your, from your uh, pockets, just for safety in case you fall. So safety is number one. So uh, SX10 on yellow scan was really great uh, for them. Also, the, having like just one software, so they use like Trimble RealWorks to process the data from both hardware was also key for them, because one platform uh, to avoid like a, a lot of exports, sorry, <laughs> and a great time saver and a guarantee of quality as well. And the last point, really, our colleagues in Japan are really excited and they really love the combinations of, uh, of both. And to finish in Japanese, I can just say domo arigato. Okay, thank you.